Well, hey everybody, what I've got here is the Surviveware Responder. This is the Midnight Black version. And this is a two-person, 72-hour emergency survival backpack. And we're gonna check it out right now on Kitbashed Survival. Alright, so one of the reasons I got this, you know, I like reviewing survival backpacks like this, but the thing that attracted me to this one is that it's very affordable compared to other survival backpacks out there. I got this one on Amazon for 160 bucks, which I thought was very reasonable, and so I was curious what you would get in a two-person survival bag for 160 bucks, especially considering that most bags this size usually go for two, three, four hundred dollars. So I left it in the box that it arrived in, so I have not looked at this at all. When it shows up at your door, this is the box it'll come in. Let's go ahead and get it out of that box. Live prepared. Oh. Whew. I had to do that off screen. That was a lot of lifting. This thing is really heavy. So let's get the scales out and weigh this thing. Now, my guess Oh gosh, this thing's probably at least 20 pounds. Yeah, 24 pounds, 10 ounces. This sucker's big. Just on first glance, this bag looks pretty well put together. We got Velcro material out here and lots of loops for connecting extra gear. A zipper pouch there. Got more webbing here and side pockets. Nothing in there, but it looks like it's made out of that kind of cooler bag material, that foil stuff. You know, if you're keeping something warm or cold. <laughs> Very interesting. On the other side, we've got a couple of mesh pockets and more webbing up here. So lots of storage opportunities. And we haven't even gotten to the inside yet. The shoulder straps seem well put together now. Looks like they're not fully connected yet. Okay, here, here it is. It's kind of cool. Got the chest strap that can move up and down. Waist belt. Nice padded back. I mean, <laughs> seems to me pretty well made, you know. I don't know how it would hold up under strain, but I mean, Looks good to me. The zippers are pretty large and rugged. Got these nice pull tabs on them. Then we got the main pouch here that unzips. We got a pouch on top, which I'm guessing is first aid equipment. And then there's a rear compartment right here. Gotta say, I mean, we're not inside this thing, but the backpack itself seems pretty impressive. It's like a fake leather vinyl kind of material. Very nice. So I guess we'll start in the top pouch with the first aid gear and then we'll go from there. So let's open up this top pouch. And I guessed right, we've got a first aid kit in here. Get out of this bag. Now this is something I'm more accustomed to with Survive Wear. They make a lot of first aid kits. I actually reviewed one of their larger first aid kits on this channel, and I'll put a link to that video if you want to watch it. That was a good first aid kit. So I'm expecting this to be pretty good, at least for its size. I don't think there's any... Uh, nope, okay. We got little bags for personal medication. Not bad. Not bad bags. So... Quite a few, it looks like five little bags, plus this larger bag, so yeah. Let's see what's in the main pouch. And by the way, on the back, they've got these Velcro straps, so you can strap it to the exterior of a bag if you need to. Nice kind of Cordura bag with the ripstop material. And there that is. Yeah, I've, I've reviewed kits like this before. I think they were made by Survivewear. So, pretty familiar, and like I said, I'm pretty confident this is going to have some decent first aid gear in it. So, we'll go through it. If you want to skip over this, there are chapters in this video, so you won't hurt my feelings. Oh, uh, what have we got here? Okay, so we got hypoallergenic adhesive tape. 
We've got a pair of shears, a pair of tweezers, splinter probes. Okay. <laughs> These are like those diabetic finger pricking probes, but in this case, you can use them to probe for a splinter. And we've got a pretty large assortment of band-aids. I guess I shouldn't say band-aids, that's a brand, I should say. Adhesive dressings. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you get the idea. Looks like there's, oh, about 20 of these normal size band-aids. Not bad. And we've got a CPR kit. Adult CPR, DRSABC, check for dangers, check response, send for help, clear open the airway, check for normal breathing. I can't even read down there. Oh, it comes out. How convenient. <laughs> Give 30 chest compressions at 100 per minute, followed by two rescue breaths. Defibrillation, attach AED, follow the prompts. Continue CPR until ambulance arrives or normal breaths return. Oh, they got one for a child on the back, too. And there's the little CPR kit. I'm not going to undo that. And we've got some examination gloves and some antiseptic towelettes. Safety pins. Got, oh, it looks like five safety pins. Got a whistle. Always good to have. A little pack of Q-tips. And... A conforming bandage, basically a roll of gauze. I'm glad these things are labeled so I can put it back together when I'm done showing you all this stuff. Got a pressure bandage, an ace bandage, your small first aid kit. Oh, they got all the contents there. I guess I could have read you that instead of pulling it all out, but that wouldn't be as exciting, would it? All right, then we got some skin cleaning wipes slash hygiene, if I can get it out. Alcohol prep pads and antiseptic towelettes. We've got here cotton gauze swabs and eye pads. Wound closures and, well, more band-aids. Look at that. These are different shapes of band-aids. So, oh yeah, these are those little steri strip wound closure things, whatever you call them. And then we've got a whole bunch of band-aids that are in various shapes. We've got the knuckle band-aids and so forth. Got the little square ones. All sorts of shapes and sizes. These little strips actually work really well. <laughs> I used a lot of those when I cut my foot open a couple years ago. Had to go through a bunch of them. All right. Then we got an emergency blanket. Mylar blanket. Always good to have. And then we've got a triangular bandage. Oh, and we've got our little first aid brochure. And I think that's everything in this little first aid kit. Not bad at all, especially for its size. And as I said, I've reviewed first aid kits from Survivor before, and so this is kind of par for the course. They make very good first aid kits. All right, now we'll open up the main compartment. And by the way, in case it wasn't clear earlier, this front pouch here is empty. There's nothing in it. At least there's nothing in there yet. Behind the first aid compartment, there's this compartment. Now there's nothing in here, but it does have a nice lining and it also has some Velcro pouches in there. So you could put paperwork or a map or something like that in there. Check that out. Now, if I scoot this over here, you can see the backside and they've got all this webbing here. This is really neat. So you could strap all sorts of stuff to the inside here. That's really cool. Anyway, so we've got this bag here, so let's check this out first. We've got quite a few things in here, so... First up, we got a life straw. 
I've actually never seen them wrapped in these individual packages. It's kind of neat. I'm sure somebody's saying, you've ruined it. You've taken it out of the hermetically sealed pack. But yep, yeah, there it is, a life straw. And we've got some cordage. Looks like 550 paracord. Seems to be pretty good quality. Got a nice little Velcro strap to keep it all secured. Got a bunch of zip ties, 10 zip ties. And these are pretty large. Be prepared, survival essential, survive wear emergency crank radio. Yeah, you've seen these before. USB cord for charging it. I'm guessing that means it has a power bank. Yeah, so you've got a power bank in here that you can charge with USB or with solar or by cranking if necessary. Looks like it's out of juice for the moment. Ah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> so it does work. And we've got a radio, AM, FM, and a weather band. I doubt this is going to work because there's not enough juice in it. So I will definitely need to charge this thing up. But yeah, I mean, you've seen these before. Nothing too special. Got a solar charger and you've got a power bank if you need to charge your cell phone or something like that. So. All right, then we've got the... Survive wear emergency two person tent. Now, this I'm actually happy to see because a lot of these kits don't have any shelter at all. So, for this to have a two person tube tent, which is exactly what it is, it's a mylar tube tent. I'm not going to take it out of there because I will never get it back in there. But it's a two person mylar tube tent. They're not great, but in a pinch, it's certainly a lot better than no shelter at all. Got some duct tape, two inches by 33 feet, or five centimeters by 10 meters. We've got a survive wear splint, an 18 inch splint. Okay, I'm not gonna open this up because it's all nice and squeezed together right now, but if you got injured and needed to splint a broken leg or arm, well, there you go. Not bad. We've got the fire starter. Ooh. So we've got a ferro rod and a striker, and that is one of the beefiest ferro rods I've ever seen. That's really pretty impressive. Let's see if it works. I'm sure it does. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> really not bad at all. Man, that is, that is substantial. I like that. All right, then we've got, what is this? The Responder Grid Net. Oh, okay, they're talking about that grid net that's on the back of the main compartment that I showed you when we opened it up. Oh, okay, you can stick this stuff into that grid net. We'll do that in just a moment. That's pretty cool, okay. And then we've got an emergency planning book of some sort. Spaces for contacts, medical contacts, emergency contacts, medical information, stuff like that. Not a bad thing to have. <laughs> they even got stuff for your pets. Insurance information, utility information. I mean, it's kind of got everything in there. You know, this isn't a bad idea. You don't see these in a lot of emergency kits, but... You know, when you're planning for a disaster, like an earthquake or a flood or something like that, it's not a bad thing to have. All right, we've got three, looks like red glow sticks. Not bad. And then we've got our knife. <laughs> not expecting much here, but, you know, let's stay positive. So there it is. Survive wear. It's got a seat belt cutter there, glass breaker right there on the tip. 
opens very smoothly. Let's see if I can get it to one hand. Yeah, just about. <laughs> Looks like there's some linen micarta in the scales there. So, you know, I it's it's not that bad. I mean, I'm sure it's not the highest quality knife ever made. There's no doubt about that, but... The operation is smooth. There's zero play in the blade. So, I mean, I'm not complaining at all. You could certainly replace it with something better, and I probably will later in this video, or at least supplement it. But, I mean, really, it's... It's not bad. I know a lot of people are going to complain, you know, knife enthusiasts will probably go crazy over something like this, but it's not bad. Let's see how sharp it is. Yeah, I can shave with it. It's not the sharpest knife ever, but it's sharp enough and it's got a good weight in the hand. I mean, it's not flimsy at all. So, you know, it may be a cheap knife that's made in China, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a piece of garbage. I mean, it feels okay. I'm not saying it's super high quality, but it's really pretty good. I've seen much worse knives in more expensive packs. Put it that way. Okay, we'll attach that gear to this webbing in just a moment, but I want to move forward and check out all of these pouches here. This thing barely fits on my table. All right, so... You know, when I weighed it, I suspected that the majority of the weight was probably going to be food and water. And I think I'm right because we've got two water compartments and two food compartments. So I guess we'll check out the water first. These are probably Velcroed in here. Yep. That's nice. You can pull them out and they've even got a little handhold. Not bad at all. It's kind of a leather-ish material. Alright, well we've got a little mesh pocket here. That's nice. I will probably add some water purification pills there toward the end of the video. Hint, hint. So, in each of these bags, I'm assuming, you know, two people, two compartments. So, it's sealed. Let's see if I can count the number of bags without Having to open it up. Looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Eh, I'll open it up and count. I think it's nine, which would make sense. Three bags per day for three days, but I'll make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. So each bag contains 4.227 ounces of water. So three bags a day for three days, that equates to about a little over 12 ounces per day. Now, it should be noted that this should not be your only source of water in an emergency, and I don't think that's the point here. This is enough to get you going so that you don't have to look for clean drinking water right off the get-go, but once you get settled somewhere, you know, it's best to look for another source of clean drinking water. And of course, that's why they have the life straw in the bag. And we've got two food pouches here, so I'll pull one of these out. I'm not going to pull both waters out because it's the same thing in each bag. It's just one per person. Again, we got a mesh pocket up here. That's nice. I could put some candies there or something. All right, so what do we have? For each person, they get one of these packs of SOS Food Lab bars. So let's see, six servings per container and 410 calories per serving. So... That's around 2,400 calories for this thing. That's really not bad, especially considering how small it is. And then we've got more SOS Food Lab stuff. These are emergency food rations. So we got two types of food rations from SOS Food Labs. It's kind of cool. Now, what's the calorie count on this? Each packet of six bars provides 2,400 calories. So is this almost 4,800 calories? That's pretty darn good for a three-day supply. I mean, 48 divided by three is, what, 16? So that's 1,600 calories per day. That's pretty good for an emergency situation. I mean, you're not going to be loving life on these things, but you will survive. Now, I would open these things, but 
I don't want to ruin them by opening them, so I'm going to leave them closed. But, you know, I've had these before. They're good. The little cookie bars are good, and these are okay as well. These are really dense calorie-wise. I mean, they're not great, but they're okay. And in an emergency situation, <laughs> they'd be more than welcome. I'm going to guess it's the same stuff in here. Let's just check. I didn't check the other water, so we'll check this one. Yeah, same thing. So, you know, I think the food calorie count is actually pretty generous. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. In an emergency situation, food is probably the least important item because your body, if necessary, can go quite a while without food, weeks if necessary. Now, it won't be fun. You're not going to be loving life, but it can be done. And certainly for three days, which is what this is designed for, you could go with less than 1,600 calories. Again, you wouldn't be loving it, but you would survive. Clean, safe drinking water, on the other hand, is probably the most important item in a survival kit because you can't go long without clean, safe drinking water. And that's why when I do my kits, I like to have multiple redundancies. So I'll usually have the bagged water to start off with. Then I've got a water filter or water filters, depending on how many people it's for. Then I've got water purification pills. And then last you want to have a container to boil water in if it comes down to that. So I like to have four levels of securing safe drinking water when I build a nice big emergency kit like this. So they're off to a good start here. They've got the bagged water and the life straw and we'll make it even better by the end of this video. All right now we'll check out the personal bags and they're probably both the same but we'll check both of them out anyway. Oh look <laughs> we got three more glow sticks. That's cool. So that's a total of six glow sticks. Well, they're using the mesh pocket up here. So we've got biodegradable large wet wipes. Survive the dust, survive the sweat. Starts to decompose in 28 days. Okay, cool. So a big thing of wet wipes. Nice. And then we got a big bag of stuff here, so let's break it out. So we got a dust mask, N95. We'll open this one up. I don't think it's going to ruin it by breaking the seal. Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. Seems like pretty good quality too. Okay, and we got this thing. Outdoor emergency poncho. Very cool. <laughs> what is this? Oh, I think I saw a picture of this. I bought it. I think it's a biohazard disposal. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. It's a biohazard disposal bag. <laughs> okay. You know, I can't recall seeing something like this in a kit before. It's not a bad idea. You know, if you're in an emergency situation, you're probably going to have some waste products that shouldn't be just left around to keep things sanitary. You know, tampons, toilet paper, stuff like that, Kleenexes. And also, you know, it's a big bag, so you could use it as a ground cover if you needed to or to collect water. So, multifunctional. Okay, what else do we have here? Oh, we got a pair of goggles for eye protection. Good idea. Okay, women hygiene. That's a weird phrasing. Shouldn't be women's hygiene. So, okay, we got three tampons. Good to have. And as we all know, these can be used for multiple purposes. So, right here, practical use during an emergency, medical bandage, fire tender, nosebleeds, earplugs, applying ointment, bleeding in the mouth, and of course, as tampons. Wow, look at this. 
It's an emergency sleeping bag. So not only do you get a two-person Mylar tube tent, you get a Mylar bivy sack. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to pull it out. I'll never get it back in there, but that's pretty cool. There's some shelter redundancies going on here. I like that. Those Mylar shelters in these Mylar bags are not very comfortable. I'll be the first to admit, but in a pinch, they're better than nothing. And what do we have here? Outdoor emergency whistle. Okay, is this one of those big orange ones with the container in it? Yeah, let's see. Not the one I was thinking of, but it is big. So first and foremost, we've got our whistle. Very strong. I like it. We've got a compass on one side, which let me see if this is going to work. That sort of works eventually. Might be a good idea to have a higher quality compass in the kit, but it does work. Took it a while, but now it's working. And we've got a thermometer in degrees Celsius, which I'm actually now very familiar with because a few years ago I set the thermostats in my house to Celsius rather than Fahrenheit. And that's how I have sort of taught myself Celsius. There it is. And looks like we got a flashlight too. Cool. A little redundancy there. Already got the crank flashlight, but we got one of these two. And I'm assuming there's one in the other bag too. We'll find out. Does this open up? Yeah, it does. Okay, there's a mirror there. I presume that's to be used as a signal mirror. What else is there? Ah, okay, there's the mirror. That's a magnifying glass. Very cool. So you could use this to start a fire if you really had to. That's not bad. You got a little mirror and a little magnifying glass. This is kind of cool. I mean, it's not the highest quality thing in the world, but, you know... In a pinch, why not? <laughs> kind of like it. That's the amazing part. I got it all back in there. Okay, I want to check this other bag real quick just to make sure it's the same stuff. It probably is. But I just want to be sure. So we got the cleansing wipes. And then we've got the goggles. I see the tampons, the whistle combo tool, the sleeping bag, the poncho, the biohazard bag. Yeah, it's the same stuff. Good to know. And that does it. That's everything in the main compartment and everything in this emergency bag. Okay, the next thing I want to do is take all of that stuff that they supplied in this bag and attach it to this grid net thing that's on the inside of the main compartment. We'll go ahead and do that. And I'll also put these extra glow sticks there as well. And again, they do have a diagram to help you sort of know where to put stuff, but I don't think that really matters. You can put it wherever you want. Alright, so what do I think of the Survive Wear two-person 72-hour survival bag? You know, I kind of like it, and I really can't find anything bad to say about it. And the reason I can't find anything bad to say about it is because of the price point. I paid $160 for this, which I think was a very fair price considering what you're getting. And I've seen these on sale for as low as $90. I think I saw it on Walmart for $90 the other day. So if you can get this for anywhere between $90 and $160, that's a great deal, and I think for what you're getting, that's a very fair price. I've seen bags like this with the same or less gear going for much more, two, three, four hundred dollars. Is it the best bag in the world? No, of course not. Does it have everything you could possibly need in an emergency situation? No, obviously not. But it's got all the basics covered, and again, it's a very reasonable price. And so overall, I like it, and I really can't find anything bad to say about it. I'm sure some people are going to criticize the price. They could make this free 
and there's somebody out there who would criticize the price. And also, you know, there's going to be people who say, well, it doesn't have this gear and that gear. It doesn't have rock climbing gear or something. But yeah, it doesn't have everything, but it's got your basics covered. And it's really, you know, in my mind, a good starting point. You could get something like this, add some additional gear to it, and have yourself a really good bag. And now it's time for everybody's favorite part. I'm going to kit bash this bag. I'm going to add some additional gear to it to make it even better than it already is. I'll start by getting this big heavy thing off the table, and then I'll show you what I'm going to add to the bag. All right, so on the food and beverage side of things, I'm going to start off with this pile of stuff. So I've got this stainless steel cup. This is one of those cups you can get at a military surplus store. And the main reason I'm putting this in here is to have a container in which I can boil some water if necessary. And of course, boiling some water might come in handy for making some coffee. So I've got six packs of freeze-dried coffee here. Keep in mind this is for two people, so one per day. Also got a couple of spoon fork combo tools. Got a thing of whiskey, might come in handy. I've got six Jolly Rancher candies. That's two per person per day. And I've got six packets of salt here. Now this isn't really for food, although you could use it to season some food, but it's also there to help with dehydration if necessary. And then to bolster up the water situation, I've got a second water filter. This is a Sawyer Mini. And I've also got 10 water purification tablets. That's enough for 10 liters. And then I've got a bottle of water. And really the main reason I'm putting it in here is to have the bottle so that I have a container in which I can put some purified water from something like the Sawyer Mini. And lastly, just in case I need to filter some sediment out of water, I've got some Melita coffee filters. Up next in the lighting department, I've got two headlamps. These are Duracell headlamps that I got at Costco. I got three of them for 20 bucks. I thought it was a great deal. They're really bright. It comes with three AAA batteries included and the headband. Great deal. Of course, I will be taking these out of the boxes to make room for them in the bag. But yep, there they are. And also sort of in the lighting department, but also as a segue into the fire department, I've got two tea light candles. Then I've got a mini big lighter. And then I've got this stuff. Insta fire, fire starter, military grade, lights up to four fires. And then I've got a container of some Yuko Storm Matches. These are those big, long storm matches that you've seen. There we go. There's a striker on the side, and there are additional striker surfaces on the inside in a little baggie. I've got a plain old book of matches, and I've got a few pieces of fat wood. Oh, and back to the food department for just a sec. I forgot this. It's a little P42 style can opener. Although there's a signal mirror included with that whistle combo tool, I'm going to include a real signal mirror. I've got a few items to add on the first aid side of things. So here's a tourniquet. You can relax. I've got a tourniquet now. And here's one of those trauma wound dressings. These are really good to have. I've got two packets of triple antibiotic ointment. And then for medications, I've got six Imodiums and a handful of pills that I will put into those little plastic bags that were in the first aid kit. So I've got 12 ibuprofens, four of these heartburn pills, and six Benadryls. And then transitioning into the toiletries and personal care products, I've got four packets of 50 SPF sunscreen, six packets of hand sanitizer. And by the way, that could also be used as a fuel source if necessary. A pack of tissues and two packs of TP, two travel toothbrushes and some toothpaste, some lip balm, and then some of those expanding towels. I've got two large ones and four small ones. In the signaling department, I've got about 12 feet of orange signal tape here. Then I've got this bandana that's made by Rhino Ready. And it's one of those survival bandanas, so it's got ground signaling information, and other survival tips on it. It's always good to have a bandana. You can use them for lots of things and one that has nice information on it is a bonus. I've got an extra little compass to supplement the one that's in the whistle tool. I've got a waterproof notebook and a pencil as well as a Sharpie. And of course a pencil sharpener to sharpen the pencil and you can also use this to make tinder for a fire. I've got two large black rubber bands. Got a couple of Ziploc bags. 
I've got three items to add in the cutting department. So I've got a folding saw. This is a Silky F180. Really nice folding saw. I've got a Dermasafe razor knife. Always good to have one of these just in case. And then I've got a Victorinox Swiss Army knife. This is the Fieldmaster model. And I like the Fieldmaster because among other things, it has the scissors, a saw, and a Phillips head screwdriver. Now, alternatively, you could put a Leatherman in this kit. That would work really well too, but I'm gonna use the Fieldmaster. And then on the technology side of things, I've got a charging cable to plug into that power bank. This one is USB-C for my iPhone 15, but I've also got an adapter to go to Lightning for my girlfriend's iPhone 14. And I'm also gonna put in a couple of these emergency phone chargers. I've got USB-C for me and Lightning for her. All right, and as always, now comes the hard part. I gotta try to get all of this stuff into that bag, so let's give it a try. I got it all in there and with a little room to spare, especially up here on the front and in this front pouch. So yeah, that worked nicely. Now, there's a couple things I haven't put on here. First of all, I would probably put a little dry bag full of clothes and attach it to the front with a D-ring or something like that. Also, there's a couple things I wanted to add that I just don't have right now and I can't wait for them to arrive because I wanted to get this video finished and out. So one of those would be a local street map of where I live here in Georgia. I'd probably put that in the front pouch here. And the other thing is two or three stand-up water bags just for extra water storage. But let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. That does it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. This is Kitbashed Survival. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.